Hello traders, I'm Luke from Discipline Trader. In this video, I want to discuss support and resistance analysis. We will go over what it is, why it works, and how to use it. So let's start with what support and resistance is. I think when a lot of traders think of support and resistance, they think of pinpoint lines on a chart that try to predict where the price will turn on a dime. But it's more complex than that. Let's start with the basics. Support and resistance refers to the technical analysis of price areas where the price action will potentially pause and change direction in any given market. If there is a price area below the current price action that has the potential to stop the price falling further and change its direction, we call this support. If there is a price area above the current price action that has the potential to stop the price rising further and change its direction, we call this resistance. Price can and does break through these price areas all the time. Typically, when price breaks through a particular price area that has been identified as either support or resistance, it will become the opposite to what it was before. So if price is rising and it breaks through an area of resistance, that resistance area now becomes a support area for the price. And the same is true in reverse. If a price is falling and it breaks through an area of support, that support now becomes a resistance area for price. There are different types of support and resistance levels, and I like to split them up into two categories. Static support and resistance, and dynamic support and resistance. Static, as the name suggests, are support and resistance areas that don't move. They are identified by the specific price level that the historical price action has shown them to be at. This is the main type of support and resistance people know and refer to when they talk about it. Dynamic support and resistance is the opposite. It refers to support and resistance levels that move. They are not at a fixed price. I use two types of dynamic support and resistance areas as part of my trading strategy, which are daily pivots and moving averages, and these levels change regularly. Daily pivot levels are specific levels of support and resistance that change on a daily basis. So I will have a set of daily pivot levels plotted on my chart on the Monday, and then these levels will change on the Tuesday. Monday's pivot levels are now no longer of interest to me on Tuesday, as all the levels have changed. Moving average levels are dynamic as well, as they are constantly changing with the formation of every candlestick. Dynamic support and resistance levels, such as daily pivots and moving averages, usually plot themselves through indicators within a charting platform. So if you add the daily pivots and the moving averages to your chart, the levels will update as soon as they need to. Static support and resistance areas usually have to be identified and plotted manually. So let's look at how we do this. We can identify these price areas by looking at the historical price action on our charts. We are looking for price areas where the price has been heading in a particular direction and then has stopped and reversed in the other direction. Equally, we can spot an area of support or resistance if the price has been heading in a particular direction and has paused for a significant amount of time before breaking through the area and continuing in its original direction. Sadly, support and resistance areas aren't as clean in reality as demonstrated by these illustrations. So let's jump up to the charts and look for some real life examples. Okay, so here we have the daily chart of the FTSE 100. And as you can see, currently the price is up at the 7300 level and has spent the last couple of months around the 7000 level. Now to demonstrate how to identify and plot support and resistance areas, I'm going to scroll back on the chart to the last time the price was in the same region as it is now. This way we can use the support and resistance areas we plot from the previous price action to see if they have any significant impact on this price action that's happened over the last few months. So I'm going to draw two red lines, one above this price action and one below. Very quickly. There we are. Now we want to scroll back and find the last time that the price was between these two lines so we can use it to identify and plot the support and resistance areas for this price region. So if we scroll back, we find that the last time price was in this particular region was sort of December, January to August 2016. So in order to start plotting the support and resistance areas, we first need to identify where they are. And as I said in the video previously, we need to spot the points where price has had a significant reaction. And to do this, we want to find where price has either been heading in a particular direction 
has stopped and reversed, like here, or where it has stalled for a significant amount of time before either breaking through a particular area or reversing. So this area here, for example. And to plot these areas, I'm going to take my circle tool and I'm just going to first pick out all the reactions that I can see on this particular region of price action. So as I said before, I'm just picking out all the reactions where price has either reversed or stalled. And I'm just highlighting them so I can see them more easily. Fantastic. Okay, and now to plot the areas, I'm going to take my line tool and I'm going to work my way down the chart until I come to a reaction point. So the first reaction point I come to is this one here. And I want to encapsulate this reaction with the two lines. So I want to take the highest point the reaction occurs and I want to try and place my line at the lowest point where the reaction occurs. And then once I've done that, I can delete my circle. So here we have our first support and resistance area. And then all we're going to do is work our way down the chart, picking out these reaction points, their lowest and highest levels, another one here, another one here. This one has more than just the one reaction from it, which is fantastic as it gives this particular area a little bit more weight in future use. If we come down a bit further, we've got this one here. So there. Actually this one could probably come a little bit lower and encapsulate that reaction as well. And then we've got one down here there, got another one here, to there, and then we've got another one here, to there, and then we've actually got another one here, to there. And then we can delete our circles as all of these reactions should now have been encapsulated in the areas that we've drawn. So that one has, yep, yep, yes, 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 and yes. Now you may have spotted that there is a particular area here that doesn't have any support or resistance area within it. And it does look quite a large area to not have any sort of area in there at all. Um, and all that will have happened is the particular price action that we're looking at here will not demonstrate where this particular area is. So if we scroll back further, here we are, we can see that the price does react within this particular area, but just not in the price action that we were looking at. So we can use this price action here to identify this support and resistance area. It's fantastic. We now have all our areas plotted. And to make these a little bit more visible for us, I'm going to color them in with this rectangle tool. So I will speed this part up as it's quite boring to watch. Okay, all done, and as you can see from the daily time frame, the price action has reacted in the support and resistance areas we have picked out from six months previous, but if we drop down to a lower time frame, we'll be able to see these reactions a bit more clearly. So let's drop down to an hourly time frame, and let's work our way backwards from the most current price action.
And as you can see, price has respected the support and resistance areas we picked out from six months ago rather consistently. We are seeing price move into these areas and then either reverse or stall all the time. We can see as price breaks through a particular support and resistance area, like here for example, he does then revisit it and use it as a support. So initially this area was resistance as price moved up into it. It broke through, revisited, used the area of support and moved up. This analysis also reinforces that support and resistance is best identified in price areas rather than pinpoint levels. You can see sometimes price will revisit a particular area, looking at this one here, on multiple occasions, and each time it will get a reaction from the area. So we've moved down, bounced up, moved down, bounced up, moved down, bounced up. But the reactions haven't come in at the exact same pinpoint level, but they have come in within this area that we identified from the daily time frame. And this happens throughout. The reactions we get through these areas, as I said earlier, are pretty consistent. But there are a few general rules of thumb that I use with support and resistance that I want to make you aware of. The first one is that support and resistance areas can be identified on any time frame. You may have spotted some further areas on this hourly chart that we haven't identified from the daily price action between January and August 2016. And as you zoom in on any price action by dropping to a lower time frame, you will always find more areas of support and resistance. But the areas identified on the higher time frames will always be more powerful. And what I mean by that is a support or resistance area identified on a daily chart, for example, will more than likely have a bigger impact on the price and will be a valid support and resistance area for a longer period of time than a support and resistance area identified on a 15 minute time frame. And the second one is that support and resistance areas don't last or stay the same forever. As price moves back through a particular price region that it has visited before, you may spot that the price is no longer having reactions at a particular support and resistance area that you've, that you've identified, or that the area that the price is reacting to has changed slightly from before. I always like to identify and plot my support and resistance areas by using the most recent price action available to me. So looking at our demonstration here, we used the price action from January to August 2016, and this was because this was the last time that price visited the same region we were looking at. But we could have used the time previous to this to plot our support and resistance areas. But for me, I always find that I get the most accurate support and resistance areas by using the most recent time that price has visited the region I'm interested in. And the last thing to note here is that trading from these levels is not as simple as waiting for price to reach them and then entering a trade. But we will discuss this later in the video. So apart from helping us to identify potential trade areas, one of the other common uses for support and resistance is helping us identify whether a market is ranging or trending. If price is making higher highs and higher lows by breaking resistance levels and using them as support, then the market is said to be trending upwards. And if the market is making lower lows and lower highs by breaking support levels and using them as a resistance, then it is said to be trending downwards. If the market is moving sideways between two levels of support and resistance, then the market is said to be ranging, as it is not making any significant movement to the upside or the downside. Some traders have strategies they will only employ if the market is trending or ranging, so using this analysis helps them to decide whether to implement a particular trading strategy or not. So why does support and resistance work? Put simply, support and resistance areas work because lots and lots of traders are watching them. Traders identify these areas because you tend to get a lot of trading activity at these levels. Some traders will be waiting to trade the reversal at the identified area, and other traders also like to trade the breakouts, whereby price breaks through the support or resistance area and the trader takes the trade in the direction of the break. So if price broke through a support zone, the breakout trader would sell the market in anticipation of the price falling further as it has broken through a support area. All of this increased trading activity usually results in either a victory for the buyers or the sellers, 
and because more traders are active at these levels, the reversal or breakout usually happens with some purpose and intent, which is what makes trading these opportunities so attractive to traders. However, it is worth mentioning, as with all forms of technical analysis, support and resistance is an art, not a science. There are going to be occasions where the market seems to forget that a support or resistance level is even there. It may just blast straight through it without even giving us an indication that any kind of reaction took place there at all. Or it may break a particular support or resistance area, and then reverse, having already broken the area. We call this a fake break, and it can trigger breakout traders into a losing trade. It can also frustrate reversal traders, as the signal for the reversal doesn't happen in the identified support and resistance area. What we as support and resistance traders have to do, is have other mechanisms within our trading strategy to refine which opportunities we take at support and resistance levels, other than just identifying them and waiting for price to reach them. If trading was that easy, we would all be millionaires. So how should you use it? For me, support and resistance is a key part of my trading strategy, but I do not use it in isolation. I have other analytical techniques that I use and wait for to give me confluence before trading. If I were to trade solely using support and resistance, I wouldn't be profitable, and it's as simple as that. I personally think support and resistance works best when you use it as one of a few layers of technical analysis that make up your trading strategy. For example, you could use it as the foundation of a strategy and build on it with a few different types of dynamic support and resistance, like moving averages and Fibonacci levels. Or you can use it to build on a strategy where the foundation comes from something like Elliott Wave Theory, and look for a particular candle pattern when both streams of analysis line up. Like with any successful trading strategy, you need to have more than one analytical method. If you have a few, and all the analysis lines up for a particular trade, then this gives the trade confluence, as it has a number of factors telling you there is a good chance this trade will be a profitable one. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to drop a like on it. If you have any questions or you want me to cover any other topics in future videos, please let me know in the comments below. Also, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. Thank you again and I hope you all have a good trading week.